I've actually debated whether or not I should talk about this for quite some time. And I'll explain exactly where I'm coming from. And you might be saying to yourself, why would you not have talked about this up until this point? And there's a couple different reasons. So for one, I think people use things that have happened to them in the past as sort of a crutch or an excuse as to why they're not doing something. And you've heard me talk about this in other videos where I've clearly stated that when I started shooting, I really sucked at shooting. When I started shooting a handgun, it got to the point where I was so frustrated that I couldn't hit a target. And I'm talking, think bigger than a D zone at five yards and I'm missing with a handgun. I was getting so freaking frustrated that I couldn't shoot my handgun. And as a man and a protector, I felt like less of that, less of a man, less of a protector, less able to defend my wife and my kids. And I ultimately was really struggling with this fact that if I suck so bad at shooting, why would I ever carry a handgun to begin with? And I even admitted in several of those videos that there is some truth behind that. If we are honestly a liability and we look at ourselves and say, hey, I, I'm just really not good with my handgun and I am a liability, you probably should seek better training or become more proficient before you fool yourself into thinking that you're gonna become some magical defender. But one of the aspects on that journey that I have never talked about is the fact that I have no feeling in my trigger finger. I also have no feeling in my middle finger. And there's a specific reason why, and yes, this is accident related. This is something that happened to me in my past and it's hard to see anymore, but I do have scars on these fingers for a reason. When I was about 16 years old, I was in woodshop class in my school. And as you can tell from where this is headed, I was using the bandsaw and the bandsaw had a faulty break. It also had a, an amount of blade exposed that was about 12 inches and it was right by your knees. So naturally, anytime you put your hands by your knees, it's right near the blade that was spinning. I had my foot on the foot brake, wasn't really doing anything, letting the blade wind down. And I still to this day remember reaching down to scratch my knee and the blade just doof, came to a stop. And immediately didn't feel anything at all. But this like sense of shock just came over me and I just saw blood everywhere and my fingertips were lopped off essentially they were hanging there by skin it was disgusting i just was in such shock of what happened but i didn't even realize how much that was going to impact me because at this point you have to keep in mind ta targets didn't exist i wasn't in the world of firearms all i had done up until that point was go hunting every once in a while so i did not have any idea not even the slightest clue of how much that action right there that mistake that you could even argue wasn't even my fault was going to impact me later on in life. And I can tell you guys, it impacted me tremendously. So you might be asking yourself at this point, why are you talking about it now? The reality is it's something that I thought might help you and it's not gonna help you in the way that maybe the title of this video might have led you to believe. I'm not gonna stand here and teach you five tricks that I used to overcome my lack of feeling in my trigger finger. Much of what I'm talking about here is a mindset thing. And it was a mindset shift that had to happen in my own life in order to overcome an obstacle that was physically holding me back. This isn't something I made up. This is a physical disability that I had in my finger where to this day, if something if pokes me, if I get burned, if I pinch my finger, there's no feeling there. I don't know what's happening to those two fingers. So obviously as you're pressing a trigger, we talk about finding the wall or feeling the reset, you start to immediately understand that there were some handicaps there that I had to overcome. And the reason that I'm talking about this tonight on this range night is it just felt like the right time to come to you guys and explain this to you. One of my good friends, Donovan, if you're on Instagram, Point One Tactics is his page and he does a bunch of trainings, a respectable dude, a guy that I really admire, good friend of mine. He prodded me when I was in Illinois the last trip we were out there and said that I should do a talking video about this to encourage other people. So I'm taking his advice and I hope that this video gives you guys a little bit of encouragement because ultimately one of the main reasons why I was sucking so bad at shooting a handgun is I physically could not feel the trigger. And think about that for a second. You're a man who has a husband and you have kids on the way. You're trying to become more responsible and a better defender. You're trying to exercise your rights, but at the exact same moment you have something that is making you stumble. And it's not something that's make-believe. This isn't some 
fear or self-doubt. This is a physical thing that is holding me back from achieving what I know that I'm supposed to be able to do. So what did I do about it? Well, I don't remember which video it was, but we talked a little bit about my struggle to learn how to shoot a handgun proficiently. Didn't talk about my finger injury or anything like that, but it did say that I kept going. And one of the posts that I made today on my personal page said, one is better than zero. And that was a note I wrote to myself in 2017. Now keep in mind, TA Target started in 2015. We really only kicked off in 2016. 2017 was one of the hardest years that I've ever navigated as a man. And some of that's because of my desire to grow the business. Some of that was the roadblocks that I felt inside of my business. But at the same time, I'm a new shooter who's trying to become better, also trying to offer products that help people become better, and I suck. And think about that for a second as somebody who is trying to speak into culture, trying to build community, trying to encourage you guys to train, but yet when I'm at five yards, I'm struggling to hit a target. And the reality is that post that I made today that one is better than zero is that sometimes in life, the only thing that you can do is move. And what I mean by that is you might suck and suck and suck and you might not have a good plan, but rather than sit still, make a move. Make a step, pick a step and go in a direction. And ultimately that's what I chose to do with handguns. I continued shooting. I continued to learn how to feel with my hand. And that sounds really strange, but I feel trigger resets in my knuckles in ways that I wouldn't have felt before. So can I feel a reset? The answer to that's yes, I can feel a trigger. It's just not the same way that you might. And ultimately I came up with a solution to become a proficient shooter, even though I have a physical disability that makes it harder for me to do that. That doesn't mean that I can't do it. And ultimately, the only thing that I wanted to encourage you guys with today is when you come across things in life that you feel like you can't change, maybe you can't change them. Maybe there's something that physically limits you. Maybe it's something that mentally limits you. Ultimately, one is better than zero. And what I mean by that is, even if you don't have the perfect solution, continually be moving forward. That's been my journey over the last eight years is that I never have the perfect plan. But one thing that continues to be true is I might stop for a second to be like, oh crap, this sucks. And I think it's okay to take that pause and be like, okay, this is a really crappy situation, but you keep moving. So guys, I learned how to shoot with no feeling in my pointer finger. That means that you guys can learn how to shoot with feeling in your fingers, or maybe you have to adapt in a different way. Maybe you have other struggles in your life, but ultimately I know that if you continue showing up every single day, you continue putting one step forward and you continue putting in the effort, you ultimately can achieve what you want. And I don't mean that in a corny way, but I hope that that encourages you in some way, shape or form, because I know that I had people in my life that encouraged me along the way. So guys, I believe in you. I think that you can do awesome things just like we're doing here. It just ultimately means you have to show up every single day, put in the work and keep that good attitude and ultimately become a better version of yourself, affect culture and affect community. Catch you guys in the next one. Thank you.